off the screens just so that we uh, have now the four remaining startups. And to remind everyone, we're going to present. So we're going to choose uh, one of you at a time. You'll have five minutes to take questions from the panelists and the other startups who made it to the round. So all panelists and the four startups, Pillar Plus, Pillar Plus Snap True, Geometry, and Modulex, be ready. Um, please keep your mics on until you're asking a question. And Amit, do you want to choose the first startup to present? Or to really take I'll the heat of the panel? Last one. Yeah, I will go with the last one first. So I will go with Snap True. Snap True. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll you request the other startup founders who are part of uh, the four be, be there and the others can log off so that we can, uh, you know, we can start with the fours. Uh, Geometry, you can uh, you can uh, kind of be on, yeah. Snap to you can be there, yeah. Perfect. Great. So, so Snap Trude, you'll have five minutes. I suggest start off with just a quick, uh, you know, ten second reminder of, of what you what your company does, and then we'll have as much time as possible for questions. Okay, sure. So uh, Snap Trude is, uh, as explained, is a design tool for the architectural industry. Uh, using which you can actually go from a napkin sketch, a rough sketch to a detailed 3D design, uh, even a BIM model within no time. So Snaptoot is attempting to disrupt the multi-billion dollar CAD industry, which is broken with age old tools like AutoCAD, SketchUp, Revit, uh, which don't get aligned in terms of how an architect thinks. So we want to bring the focus back to the art of architecture, which is what matters for the design industry. So uh, I would like to uh, directly share the uh, presentation, if I can share the presentation. Sure. Uh, I'm not able to share the screen. You can try now. Okay. okay. Wait, can you enable all four of them to be able to share the screen and uh, the other four can also be live. Uh, uh, Geometry would serve module X, you can also be visible so that uh, we can all ask questions. Yeah. Let's just do it uh, interesting now. And this is a grilling round. Go ahead. Yes. So I would start with, uh, a demo of the tool. Uh, that's where the most of the significance of the tool is in. I just upload a rough napkin sketch and show you how quickly we can uh, actually develop a 3D model of it. You may want to talk, uh, uh, that will help, uh, uh, you know, because you just have five minutes and even in that five minutes, you just have two minutes to present something and then the balance three minutes will be grilled. So yes. I'm just making you aware of that. Yeah. I've just uploaded a rough hand drawn sketch. I just need to set one scale because at the end of the day, it's an image. And the moment I do that, I can actually just do create Drawing. Eric, just pause when you think that two minutes are there for the over for the presentation so that we can do the query. Yeah, if you can see the design is getting digitized automatically out of the sketch, totally editable, like how you would edit any AutoCAD drawing, you would be able to label them in 3D, you would be able to generate a massing drawing as I've done right now, uh, which is already in 3D, as you can see. And uh, say if this is uh, a balcony will be smart enough to be able to uh, take your voice is inputs and uh, change the height and, and uh, parameters, the parameter I can put off on top of it. So Snapchat, we can see that you took a handwritten sketch and then your system generated a 3D model based on it. Your voice is starting to break up, but that's uh, two minutes there. So now we'll see, we'll first start with a panelist. Anyone on the panel who has a question? Or an argument against it, either way. Uh, well, uh, even SketchUp would do this for me in a minute. So how is this different? So SnapTrue, unlike SketchUp, is fundamentally a BIM tool. Uh, SketchUp is very well known for its... Your voice is cracking a lot. Sorry, your voice is cracking a lot. Do you want uh, your other co-founder to join or speak because we are not able to hear uh, you? You can switch off your video, May. that may work. Yeah, so uh, is this better right now? Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, so uh, uh, as I was saying, so SketchUp is fundamentally not a BIM tool. Uh, it is not known a lot for its inaccuracies and it's supposed to be a very quick uh, design implementation, but still it is complex in nature. 
and uh, at the end of the day, it just helps digitization. It does not become part of the design process because the file which is created in SketchUp lives and dies there. Snapshot is part of a workflow. You can go from your sketch, generate your 2D drawings, draft them, model them to the end, generate data which is very insightful at the initial stages like area schedules, bill of quantities, bill of materials, which will help you shape the design as it goes forward. Good. Uh, uh, any any panel, any uh, startup who's there? Now founder. Ask, founder can Yeah, one of the other three companies uh, who made it. Go ahead, Utsa. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Uh, Altaf, hi. Altaf is a good friend we've met before, of course, of flights. Uh, I mean, I mean, this is not a new question. We've spoken about this before, but very quickly wanted to, uh, you know, uh, just, just ask that, you know, a, a very important part of the process, the design process for me personally, is between when I make, let's say, a sketch and then, you know, when I want a very precise kind of a model, and there's a lot of steps in between, I want to change, uh, you know, uh, things in my sketch, maybe I just got a few things wrong, right? Like the, the scaling of it and all of those things. And, and, and you know, the, the natural design process for me is where I can take that and try to rescale it. And, and there are a lot of these things that I kind of do in between, right? Uh, so uh, how do you take care of that? So Snaproot, not just, is just a sketch to 3D tool. It has a full-fledged, a sketch editor, 2D editor, as well as a 3D editor for you to modify each and every aspect of the design. So one step is to get the sketch to 3D and there are a lot of these design iterations which happen and unfortunately the existing uh, tool set which is there, AutoCAD, they are not so flexible with this thought process which architects have. We want to provide that by giving that flexibility in the tool and outside the tool as well. So uh, one main 30 seconds. Is, yeah, Snapshot also works extremely well even on an iPad with the Apple's, uh, Apple Pencil. That enables you to not just sketch, but sketch accurately at times. At times you would just want to uh, uh, iterate over a few. Uh, yeah, but then again, when do I get to actually get the accuracy right, right? Because I need to be accurate in terms of, I want my aisle to be like, you know, like three feet. Like I have that already in my mind, right? Like I want it to be this wide. So yeah. when, you know, do I do these things and, 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 you know, how does that entire piece come out? Because a BIM model by definition has to be extremely, extremely detailed. There's so many levels and layers of detail that of course the sketch wouldn't reflect in the first place while the sketch is good to ideate. Seeing the right. sketch go into a BIM model would kind of uh, remove the- So we're, I'm gonna cut you idea. off geometry. Uh, we are out of time, but Snapshot, you can at least answer you that can question. Ask, Just yeah, answer you, it you can answer that question and we'll restrict the question to be very small and precise so that uh, you know everyone get the chance to answer this. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Answer the question. So a uh, sketch can be detailed out. The moment it is converted to a drawing in Snapshot, it comes with accurate dimensions. And each and one of those dimensions can be adjusted to four decimal digit accuracy in MM. So that's why the BIM model which is generated or the bill of quantities or area schedules which are generated are accurate by that extent. And you have the complete control over uh, how the dimensions get transformed from the sketch to a 3D model. So the sketch optimization technique to, use to calculate the most nearest dimension, which are all editable by the user. So Altaf, the output of your software, is it a CAD? Is it a BIM model? What is it that we should expect? It's a BIM model. So you can take it out to Revit. You can also generate drawings out of it. Uh, you can, so the biggest advantage during this time, it's an online tool. So you can collaborate with all your stakeholders just out of a web browser. If you just share the link with them, they'll be able to see the 3D as well as the 2D drawings. But if you want to go out of the tool, you can export it to the standard file format. So uh, more than my investment in the Revit-based, BIM-based tools, I'm also investing in Snapshot. That's an add-on expense for me. Yes, oh, like not compared to SketchUp or AutoCAD. Revit, you would need it just for service integrations, which is the MEP uh, and the detailed design development aspect. That is something which Snapshot does not do. We focus on architectural design. Why don't you collaborate with Pillow Plus? Yes, definitely. We'll, we'll, we'll have <laughs> That's a chat. a great position, yeah. Bringing okay. startups together as we speak. So, Amit, who do we have next? Yeah, we'll ask uh, Meghda to take that. Uh, who do we want Modulex? Yeah, we can go with Modulex. He's, he's already started sharing the screen. Yeah. Go ahead, Modulex. Two minutes and then three for questions. Right. Gents, uh, thank you. Um, I think the key element here why I've, as an entrepreneur, chosen this construction technology is because from all the startups I've heard, there's a lot of work, man hours, investment going into everything up to the desktop level. What happens, and we all know this, the biggest problem is when you send hard hats with a shovel into the ground. 
So it's all about creating the asset that we want to work around with all these efficiencies that these wonderful startups are talking about. But how do we actually make a building happen? I think that's where there's been the single biggest problem in terms of disruption uh, for tech. And you heard it from one of the panelists as well. For a developer, can he get a high quality building done on a fixed cost and time guarantee in the least possible time possible? That's, that's essentially what we're talking about here. I somehow, for some reason, can't seem to share the, um, the screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, the, 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 the screen. We can see okay, the screen. Quickly, just, I know there's a couple of reservations that has been raised. Firstly, there are various streams of technology. We have modular 3D, which is on the right. And with, with regard to, um, uh, to the um, architect's point of view, with regard to US, please note the variation of technology that we have in the UK is indeed the most advanced. It is steel-based. It's not timber-based. And the tallest building currently being built is 44 stories. In fact, if I, if I took you straight through to that, just to give you an idea of what that building looks like, um, this is essentially what it, what it looks like. Now, what you're seeing here is, um, this is two towers, 44 stories, and 38 stories being completed in 24 months. This is the real McCoy when it comes to delivering modular buildings. And I can assure you, if you walked into this building, this is a grade A, net zero, carbon neutral building that has been delivered in 24 months on a fixed cost and time guarantee. And I think when we're talking about disruption in construction, it's very important that we focus not just on what happens on desktop, on architect's desk, on designer's desk, what is really happening on the construction. Here is another, in, here is an, uh, the, the range of applications that we're talking about that we can do in very short time on high quality. And there have been um, the points raised about reservation about shapes and sizes. Uh, we can do circular buildings, star-shaped buildings, rectangular, you can see the the University of Oxford Biochemistry Department, that's an odd-shaped building. It's its almost like a, uh, well, it's an L-shaped building. Uh, the set one right to the right to that is uh, the student accommodation, which is, again, a 28-story building completed in 14 months. So, yes, we can so be getting... over the two minutes. I would say wrap it up now so we can get some questions. Okay, in. so I want to close it off by saying, look at this example. This is an 86 apartment, 24-story building. It's the tallest residential modular building. Manufactured in 24 weeks, installation in 27 days and finishing in 30 days. So that's really what we need to be looking at, uh, people, is when it comes to the technology. And one other last point, we have enough technology in our sales in situ. We are using AI for fast, optimized design in minutes, not in hours. Blockchain to give you traceable quality assurance. IoT to give you live data through multiple sensors. And of course, all our buildings are certified at net zero uh, buildings. Thank you. Interesting. So, uh, can you, when you said that it is fixed cost and time, can you uh, say more? So, are you taking these contracts on a fixed cost? So, which you're committing, uh, what does that mean? Yes, you indeed. Uh, what we'd be looking at is say, if it's going to cost you, uh, say, uh, I'm going to give a random number. Stop sharing your screen so that your video will be, uh, will be kind of, will be able to see you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so sorry. Yeah. 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 Can you see me now? Yeah. Okay. So, um, if you uh, to give you an example, if, if a project costs say five crores, and that's what comes up as a BOQ, uh, we know in traditional construction, once you start, uh, if the contractor says twenty-four months and five crores, it's never five crores and it's never twenty-four months. What we are giving you is essentially a twenty-four month um, con confirm, uh, guaranteed contract with a performance bond uh, for the cost that is fixed in there. Uh, in the UK, for example, we can deliver a 100 room hotel in 24 weeks. We are, of course, in India, considering the supply chain issues, road, transportation, installation, all these different issues and concerns you've raised through this forum. Uh, it is all priced in uh, in, our, in our contracting, and we're actually doubling the time. So in, the, in India, we would be uh, saying that it'll be 52 weeks as opposed to 24 or 26 weeks for a 100 room hotel. Sure. That makes sense. That give me an answer. And and when uh, when do the, you uh, start in India? You said the factory is uh, getting built. So when does the actual execution start in India? Well, assuming that we can hopefully all go back to normalcy post uh, the COVID nineteen lockdown, uh, we were about six to nine months away from completing the factory, uh, and that we'll be starting trial production about three months before that nine months uh, to dovetail in with the production. So we're going to start with sample modules which we will want to be 
uh, shipping uh, from our factory site in Indapur, just about 100 kilometers from uh, Pune on the uh, pune Sholapur Highway. And we're going to then have some sample modules to start show buildings being set up in, in uh, Pune, uh, Mumbai, Navi Mumbai, and, and Pune. So we'll the, five minutes, but we went a little bit over in the last one, so we'll just do one quick question, yeah. and then we'll wrap it up. Founder, one question, right? So India is known for uh, issues post the construction. So if you are doing these modular buildings, and then you know people will be able to kind of so it's 24 months uh, or maybe then 24 weeks, 48 weeks, all looks great. But what happens to the after? Uh, after construction, if there are leaking issues, there are plumbing issues, who solves those and will there be a manual power labor required there and how will they be able to solve them? So there's no specialist design in our building. Our buildings are exactly like a standard traditional building. In the UK, there is not a single modular contractor that provides after sales service. And that should probably give you an indication of the fact that you don't need, if you want to take a wall off, our walls are not load bearing. If you want to blow a wall through, uh, as people do in the residential apartments, you can do that. If it is plumbing, uh, there's actually a, a, a plumbing MEP is is uh, uh, down to prices. It's very easy to get to. So and I think you're saying that it is possible to do all those things that there is no issues phase even yeah. in, there will be no issues phase even in India. Yeah, anybody can maintain the building. Sure. That's right, yeah. Uh, founders, do you have any questions or for, for Suchit Modulex? Uh, so, Chita, I understand that there's a factory project which is under construction in India. If I may know, where is it located and tentatively by when do you think uh, we as professionals can visit uh, the project and have an inspection? Uh, yeah, so um, assuming, I mean, from the time of the lockdown lifting uh, and we were able to get uh, the, uh, the reconstruction restarted, we're looking at about six to nine months uh, and we should be able to show you some sample modules at the factory site about six months after uh, six months uh, just immediately after that six month period so within within uh, nine months from uh, the lockdown opening up and our construction restarting you can come and visit this factory site it's in Indapur which is 100 kilometers from Pune and it's from the Pune Cholapur Highway it's an MIDC industrial estate it's a 40 acre facility sure. that we've been doing. sure yeah good let's move to the next startup then you want to start with geometry so is there. Hello. I hope you can see my screen right now. Like I said before, Geometry is the world's simplest toolkit to create virtual reality content, run this content anywhere and everywhere, and then, of course, run analytics on it. Uh, in the interest of time, the short format, I'm just going to show you some applications. Look at this one. This is the, the virtual reality store that we've done for Big Basket. You can actually look around. You can shop. Let's say you come in with the intention of, oh, I just want to pick up apples. You, 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 you go like, ah, guavas. I've been missing those guavas for a while. So you actually can click on it, and you can add it to your cart within this interface. So we allow you to do things like that. Not only that, wherever it's relevant, we also allow you to uh, view 3D models. Just give me a second. So let's say we've got you know a store like this, which is the beauty store that we've done again for Big Basket. You could go in and say, oh, that seems interesting. Pretty much how you were in physical retail. You can click the view 3D model, look at it, pan it around, and you know scale it up, read what's written on the box, and so on and so forth. And all this can be built in hours. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a very, very simple process. Uh, this is what we've done for some of our clients. Live availability dots, which you can directly book. All of these are available. I can take click on that unit. I'll be able to walk inside it and see it. Again, the platform allows you to customize. I can have a nameplate with the name of the person who's coming in if they enter their name. I can collect data. I can collect phone numbers. Uh, you would be able to kind of see, ah, this person was more interested in the 4BHK. So I can, when I call that person back, I would be able to have that information that this person is interested in. Uh, so And so that's, again, uh, some of the examples that we have. Uh, we also allow you to kind of have these sales trainings, right? So what if I want to, in real estate, train my sales force to be able to have a conversation? So I can have, uh, I can put you into these scenarios. Uh, sorry for that loading right now, but I can put you into those scenarios. Uh, as that loads, maybe we can take a quick detour into uh, this other, uh, 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 you know, this this other experience as well. So I can I can actually put you into a scenario where you've got you know somebody advising you that this is how a typical sales process happens, uh, and 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 you know, uh, so we've got like the ability for you to kind of uh, you know gamify pretty much all of your content. Uh, again, this is what the kind of work that we're doing with Reliance. Reliance uh, 
uh, uh, digital kind of taking their uh, source online. So I think I think there's a variety of uh, content that is possible. All this is built on this unified platform. Thank you. So you have to stop your do the discussion uh, more. Yeah, stop sharing your screen. Uh, can you stop yes. sharing your screen so that we can get into more discussion? Now? Yeah, let uh, Naman was kind of raising hand, so we'll ask, let Naman ask the first question. Go ahead, Naman. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. Naman, unmute yourself. Yeah, uh, I was saying that there are multiple uh, similar options available uh, that uh, through Google. Uh, JavaScript APIs where we can simply upload a VR and it generates JavaScript APIs is, is the yeah. is the key question. I get your question. It's but this is like no coding required, right? Like I could kind of come in and do this. Google allows you to see the 360 space and move around. I allow you to, for example, have a salesperson standing over there. You can click on the salesperson, use voice recognition to ask a question, how much does this cost? And that person will actually answer. This is a virtual salesperson you can integrate into the platform. And again, like you as a designer can build this. You don't need to be dependent on developers to be able to do it because it's such a simple toolkit. And at the same time, uh, you know, if you want to run analytics on this, right? So Google doesn't just, just puts the 360 onto the Maps platform. What we allow you to do is we allow you to kind of, you know, move around these spaces, understand how everything is done at your own end. You could host this on your website. You could run it everywhere. Your sales team could use it, not just for selling it, but of course for training themselves. And these are just some of the applications that can come out. Uh, we work across uh, a lot of segments, right? So uh, this, is, this is just one of the use cases, of course, but it's a very, very versatile platform where you can build all of these things pretty simply, drag and drop editor. Got it, awesome. Utsav, uh, is this a kind of uh, a license? I asked this question in the previous section that from a real estate developer perspective, how do he ensure that his team is able to build that and he's able to yeah. kind of get ROI on the investment they make in buying the license of Geometry? So Absolutely. I mean, we, yeah, we save a lot of costs, right? Like, for example, if you take the entire sales process, we've been able to, for our clients, save up to 60% of the direct cost on sales. Again, this is adding to your top line because we can sell more and we can sell more uh, way, way in a quantified fashion. Uh, in order to create this, maintain this, you don't... Let, yeah. me, let me interrupt you, sorry. Uh, uh, as a real estate developer, I am of a belief that, you know, if the customer will come to the site, then only he will buy and then only he will i'll be able to sell does real estate sale happen on kind of a vr virtual reality and will that be the case or do you think that you will be an ad kind of gen be used as a more like a lead generation tool and shashi is there and she can add uh, any any further question on that uh, just just very quickly to uh, kind of come in on that, right? The entire real estate sale process. So there's a leasing process. This is very applicable for leasing today, right? Or even the search aspect of it. But the entire sales process is like, strewn over an entire like let's say month at, at the very least people usually go out they scout different things and engagement is key like this is like everything else see the building as a product you need to engage your customer you need to make sure they have all the information in one place uh, you know what happens post sales even when somebody comes to your sales office first of all geometry is being used as a touch screen on many of those sales offices or in virtual reality headsets but even after that you need to send a link to that guy so that you know that person can kind of track and you can track if they've been viewing this or not. So I think it's it's an all-rounded tool that can be used your, across your the internet. Is there Sorry? your screen time screen? I'm seeing some screen. Uh, is yeah, no, you? that's not mine. Yeah, no, that's not me. So that's about uh, five uh, minutes. I, Any final questions? I just have one yeah. small question. Uh, are these uh, visuals that we saw of the store, uh, are, the, are they fresh produce that are being tracked and shown to a customer or the, this is one-time activity of pictures stitched together? It's a one-time activity, and you can either do it on-site or you can do it virtually through 3D models. So what you saw was a mix of both. But how it's a one -time you activity. know that the inventory is still available? Wouldn't you end up ordering we have, that? Yeah, we have a massive API layer that can work. So for example, you get real-time updations on that. Uh, for the customers, and they can, you can just maintain an Excel sheet, and we would automatically make those things visible or not. So it's a very, very simple process. We look at all of these things real-time. So on a, on a, in a food store, on an average, there are 150 um, SKUs, for instance. Do so you think you'll be able to edit those visuals li live and give that customer experience? No, it's automated. The entire process is automated. We have 14,000 SKUs in some of our stores, and all of it is automated via the API layer. Basically, as it goes offline, it, you would either see an unavailable tag over it, it would gray out. There's a multitude of ways you can do it. In fact, I'd just like, use, like to use this. So we even adapt. When the user uh, comes in... Right. 
I, I got that point. So Meghna, just to answer that point. So just I'm trying to because Naman is waiting, and so I want to block uh, uh, the usage of time just for for the benefit of all the startups. Uh, so Meghna, just in one line, what uh, they are doing is that they will be able to uh, integrate with any uh, CRM system which they have, and if there is a kind of a, a online, if you don't have. Or an offline, you don't have automatically that that visual will go and it will automatically adjust from that perspective. So it will never be out of stock. Awesome, that's nice. So Uchav, just cutting that so that you know we give Naman uh, enough time. And so our last startup of the morning. Five minutes on the clock. Whenever you're ready. And the startup, you feel free to ask questions, right? Because this is a grill round for everyone. Anyone can ask all of all three of you can ask any questions to any other startup. Go ahead. No one, we are not able to hear you. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for this opportunity. Uh, so I'll just quickly get started. Uh, we at Pillar Plus are building software that automatically creates construction blueprints uh, currently operating in India. So just a quick overview of how the design works right now and how we work right now. So building design is still performed manually when a, where an architect would create the floor plan as per the client needs. He will design where the doors are, where the windows are, where the walls are, how big the room he wants, where he wants to place the switchboards, where he wants to place the wash basin. He'll design that as per client needs. On top of those floor plans, an independent design firm, which we call the MEP engineering firm in India, would create these construction blueprints over it manually. The complete set is a set of 15 engineering blueprints, which has HVAC systems, firefighting systems, electrical systems, plumbing systems, ducting systems. And then these blueprints are given to a general contractor who are our electricians and plumbers who build using these blueprints on site. We come in here and say that we will replace the human dependent design firm through our software. So now the architect would give the floor plan to a pillar plus enabled design firm where these blueprints will be generated automatically and given to the contractor. In US, the process works a bit different where, uh, where we have seen that majority uh, of the times the contractor is the one getting these blueprints made. But here in India, it's the architect who's coordinating with the MEP firm, getting these blueprints generated. So uh, coming directly to uh, what we are offering right now. So right now, since it's something as vital as designing a building, we are using the software in-house. The software is learning every day as per the inputs uh, of the design and get in getting improved day by day. We plan to open it uh, soon right now. We are running a software enabled design firm, making the process highly reliable at the same industry price. We are providing extremely superior quality blueprints. For example, in sprinkler systems, we even show where weldings would happen, where the threading would happen. We deliver 20 times faster, a process that takes three to four months to get these blueprints. We do it in a day. That means uh, you get instant revisions and you save up on it and developers or the client saves on interest costs on the building. We provide extremely accurate bill of quantities with project cost estimates, and we also provide price list. So for uh, government projects, we have something called the scheduled rates that we provide as per state with product specifications as well. So we have the complete data of the house. We decipher the floor plan. We understand where everything is, how everything is laid out and generate these 15 MEP blueprints. I've uh, uh, removed a lot of uh, details from here. All these are generated automatically. For example, on the left, you see the sprinkler systems. This gets generated in our software within 10 seconds, which is practically impossible for a human being to do. We even mention the thickness of the pipe at every edge, at every after every sprinkler, as per the hydronomic pressure calculations, so that correct installation happens and safe, hygienic, and correct buildings are made as per codes. So it's an extremely hard problem to solve using AI, sure. use optimization to minimize it's material waste, so that stuff. And, and yeah, and we believe this is the future of construction where the complete five to six months of building automation of uh, building design is reduced within a matter of few days. Since we generate the MEP blueprints now, the next goal is to generate sprinkler uh, blueprints. After that, since we have the bill of quantities, we'll create a bidding portal where uh, these will be sent out to contractors and, uh, and an ERP and work schedule will be generated automatically. 
and we can also generate 3d renders of these houses and do automatic interior design as well and generate uh some renders based on the floor plan sure. that you I think have we'll have to pause you here sorry we'll get into the question mark question yeah. and yeah, session yeah, sure. absolutely you yeah. stop your video yeah. sorry do you want to stop sharing so that we can see you yeah perfect <clears throat> okay so first question from a panelist yeah. yeah so my question would be how do you gauge the you know real reliability and how do you trust what has come out and then you know how uh, is someone if there are iterations to the plan going forward how they are incorporated and how do you get this real validated when it comes of real execution right so how is so, that process and that might vary with different uh, geographies so uh, if you can elaborate on that so yeah currently we have been operating around north india jaipur and uh, new delhi so in the past uh, 3 months uh, we have contacted 253 architects 68 signed up uh, for to working with us when we talk to them we discovered where the rear value proposition for them is what issue they are facing with the current cust, uh, consultants the current consultants are highly unreliable in the sense since it's manual you have to go after them that please give me these blueprints and these blueprints. so my question so, is how do you get the validation of this plan you know how do you really trust this and start execution how, so, what, so what is the validation our, our our experience uh, team currently here uh, we have uh, consultants from lt from acom we have hired people who have done design the world trade park in jaipur we have designed the eternal hospital in jaipur so we have the team of experts with us our software are currently we are operating as a service and we generate the blueprints get the blueprints thoroughly vetted by our consultants and only then give it out to the uh, architects or the contractors so a vetting process happens after after the vetting that feedback goes into the software the software learns and improves and it's and the ai improves and that way artificial intelligence is getting smarter with more data and as a, as and with time we are in, in increasing the capacity of the projects we can take in by automating more and more and by uh, correcting uh, more and more you uh, blue print uh, uh, you mentioned one day right so what you're saying now is that that one day would be kind of few more days because from a reliability perspective i mean uh, because it's a huge infrastructure cost to the cost the developer is going to do based on those blueprint right they cannot yes. go wrong so from yes. that perspective what is the accuracy do you seeing uh, just in a percentage term do you have the current designs and then after it, uh, iteration from the consultants what kind of accuracy you are able to do it just kind of so uh, number one all of uh, all the all the national building codes the nbc codes are hard coded into the software it thoroughly vets that whether there is a violation in any code or not number two we generate the blueprints currently the software takes a minute to generate these we say we deliver we deliver in a day in two days because those one two days are spent by the consultants thoroughly vetting the blueprints they check the results they give the feedback to the software team they manually correct in case there is uh, they manually correct the blueprints in case anything goes wrong and that is why by delivering it in a day huh. we ensure that whatever we are build, giving is correct we have to be absolutely sure with whatever we are doing because we have designed hospitals now it's such a huge responsibility over our head and we make utmost sure and we make utmost clarity that we what God. we are giving is correct Someone got it. Utsal, you had question. Yeah. We'll go Utsal. I think we have to make now. Uh, yeah. I only have one question: Is are you going to? Uh, uh, is is this a product or is it a service that you're providing? Yes. So currently we are operating as a service. So uh, right now we get the blueprints from the architect or the contractor on an email, use the software in house, and give the blueprints again back on the email, just like any traditional MEP consulting firm would do. Just that we are much faster, detailed, and accurate. and with bill of quantities but we are working by de with developing the front end of the product now so that anybody can use it so we will be opening it, it up to other consultants who can design more projects using it and in turn give us feedback and the software would get even more smarter and uh, we have already got contact uh, we are already in contact with 11 con uh, mep consultants from indore from egypt from panama who are already experimenting with the tool uh naman how adaptive is this to different a building types b climate zones c you know types of uh, you know the way that you can, the, the, because there's a lot of versatility in building types so how adaptive Correct. is this are your algorithms yes so uh, the initial team mep consulting team the experts that we started with they already had information as to what the building codes are in different states in india 
in Middle East, in Hong Kong, in Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. So we already knew the codes there. We incorporated that into the software already. So they can be selected. The parameters change automatically whenever you mention the location. So this, how far the sprinkler should be, how at what connections should the drainage lines be drawn. So it changes as per the state and uh, 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 country. So it's highly flexible. And we have already taken that into consideration while designing the software. The workflows uh, are also different everywhere. building systems, right? Building yes. systems. So, would yeah. so now that we, uh, so we began with residential, that was where we were in November and December. But uh, with, we, with the past three months, we have built complexities such that we can design hospitals, we can design co co uh, business centers, we can design uh, even more complex conference halls, mm -hmm. uh, multiple lights, all of that stuff, offices. So once, since we are now able to do commercial. So Naman, just wrap up, just we're uh, over time, so we'll just yeah. ask you to wrap up that sentence. Yeah, we can design all kinds of buildings. Since we are very accurate with commercial now, residential is just a cakewalk for us. Excellent. Big round of applause to all four startups who made it to round two and all 10 startups who uh, presented their solutions today. Thank you so much. So now we're going to uh, send three polls essentially to the audience. Number one is going to be vote for your favorite of these four startups. And then after that, we're going to be asking anyone in the audience uh, if there's any of these companies of all 10 who you're interested in following up with and maybe doing some business with, we'll, we'll ask you that so you can fill it out. And then finally, we'll ask for your feedback. Um, if you guys want to see us do this again with this kind of format or a similar format in the following months. Yeah, this is very critical. And I just want to add this, right? I've been doing panel discussion for last two days and I've done like a couple of, you know, a couple of weeks doing, just doing all this panel discussion. For me, this is the most interesting day. I mean, personally, because it is so satisfying that in just one hour, we just kind of just been one hour and we have seen so different, so many different types of solutions, so many different types of kind of applications. And I think this is the most satisfying one hour to me personally. And uh, Meghna is just blushing there and I would want to take her view. Uh, whilst Meir, can you uh, switch on the poll button so that we can uh, have the audience start voting there? Meir, can you just go on with the audience poll and we'll take Meghna's view there. Yes. Yeah, I, I just missed the last bit. Uh, Amit? Uh, Meghna, your view, I, I just saw you blessing that, you know, I just wanted to ensure that uh, how was your overall experience? I mean, it just um, been an hour of... Absolutely wonderful, Amit. Uh, very, very promising startups. Uh, I would I would say they have gone ahead in their journey and they are already achieving more than probably what the industry is expecting. I wish them all best luck and uh, for me also this was a very enriching experience uh, having to understand so many startup solutions coming around uh, the real estate industry. So thank you so much. Uh, Shashi, do you want to share your thoughts? Yeah, for sure. I think it was uh, you know an amazing session. Uh, you know, definitely a lot of learnings. It's in fact uh, activated some of my thoughts on certain areas, reactivated, I would rather say. So definitely out of this, from my reference point of applic business application, I see uh, four of those which I suited as, uh, uh, you know, my favorites. Invariably, I'll be discussing with them. Um, you know, I see a lot of opportunity and, and uh, you know, there's, this is the time when various other mall companies are also trying to look at a third party service provider. So I see many of them, not that there is, you know, like parking, uh, you know, the gate parking can uh, be G metric. They can all come together and see, uh, you know, sort of um, a 360 degree aspect of solution. They, I can't take just one guy, and I can take, but still I see a lot of, lot of integrated solutions. So it's going to be pretty uh, exciting. If given the COVID-19, we require such kind of an exciting alternative so that way it's interesting thanks thanks and i wish uh, not that even non-relevant to me the other uh, formats uh, be it snap through uh, you know pillars and yeah they all were very very interesting very academically very interesting though it does not apply to me as a construction head or a project head but i obviously i give this feedback to my counterparts the head of projects i'm sure they'll be interested and i'm sure they'll they'll, they'll yeah. appreciate That's it so thanks. wonderful Thank you. Uh, Anup, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think there were different genres of startups which were there uh, today. And I think uh, with this format, at least we understand that there is a need uh, with the industry to have more and more problems solved and get them exposed to them. Because I think uh, that's the important link uh, uh, which, which we are solving out here. 
so so yeah i think couple of more uh, uh, hardware related and other companies robotics etc can be included in the next phase but uh, this gang was uh, really exciting yeah we want to do that so if uh, if the audience finds this uh, valuable i think uh, megna just want to take your poll uh, and shashi your poll and eric your poll that do you think and even the from a startup perspective do you think that this are the kind of thing which is a need of an hour what we are doing is relevant because this is a way to bring so many solution in just one hour but, but the back end team was working for the last entire week to talk to startup founders giving you know explaining them they were all bold enough to also come and say that they yeah, are we are ready for this we made it little uh, easier for everyone to kind of uh, just be there and talk uh, but i just want to ensure that uh, do you think that this is a format which is required shashi anup and megna just to your your view so that we know that what we want to do next uh, and honest like if you think uh, doesn't make sense we'll just be okay with that as well Uh, I have attended a lot of mobile tech and IT events, um, Amit, and I see this is a need of the hour that we do this for the real estate industry uh, because uh, probably this is the only time we are able to, uh, you know, sit back and think and ideate, and that's where all of this will come handy. And we'll get uh, the time and opportunity to even reach out to them and explore some of the solutions so i think this is the best time that we are doing this and i look forward to a lot more of these coming in for the real estate so uh, she your final thoughts uh, before mil uh, mihir kind of starts the uh, disclosure of the poll audience poll man in, in my opinion it is it is very crucial uh, for people like me professionals like me to have uh, um, you know one is from a you know post business applications in case of um, malls but also in case of constructions in case of new developments i think some of these startups are really to the point and as long as if it uh, you know matches to the the cost of uh, you know the productivity and the profit thing I, i'm sure why not i mean i see a larger yeah. applications more closer to the you know the reality aspect of require perfect so i think we are getting lot of audience questions that some of you are not able to get the poll uh, i think it has been uh, kind of uh, published to everyone so it should have been reached uh, but we have got i think almost 90% votes uh, of the audience who are present currently so we we are assuming that most of you would have got that uh, just check on your system somewhere you will get and uh, no, you will find that uh, poll results uh, to uh, we would be doing a a, a, a poll for a uh, lot of people have asked in the questions that you want to reach out to the startups and how to get connected to them uh, we would be sending a mail after you know in exactly 24 hours from now uh, to all uh, uh, with uh, the details about the startups and uh, there will be again a interest link for there so all those who are interested on those relevant startups meer is going to run the second poll now for that also and then we will be will be also sending the link so you can just fill in the form that hey this is my name this is my company and this is a startup or the solution i'm interested in and then based on all those collections we will uh, do a detailed discussion or a connections with those things meer have you shared the results uh, is that results live uh, not yet do you want to take the survey for the poc first and then disclose the winner yeah can you do that yeah quickly we can do one survey for the pocs uh, uh you can just click that uh, who are you know startup you are interested in me can you run those surveys i think you can run all the three surveys uh, and there is one more survey for us that you know if you have got uh, me can you run the third survey also where you can say that whether we should do this and the next time we will promise you that we will be able to get many more startups uh, from across the globe so if you think that uh, we should be doing this uh, exercise uh, at our end we would want uh, your vote also that you know we should be doing that <laughs> so just a suggestion there amit i think what we can do as a next uh, step if you all can you know get uh, different genres or what we saw 1122 samples if we can get on each genre say five to six solutions that could make lot of sense so that people come focus say this is just a construction related solution this is just a software related for a particular problem so that could uh, also create lot of excitement and will uh, benefit to the industry so sure, we can look at that uh, as a comment and uh, there is one email id called tania@cobgini.com uh, 
you can just write any email there and we will be able to take all those feedback and suggestions so it is tania at copgenie.com if you can write uh, on that email if you have any feedback suggestions me has put that in the chat box so we'll be able to do that i think uh, we will just wait for the poll result uh, i'm excited to see who is the winner and uh, and who's kind of done that and we've been getting lot of uh, interest uh, uh, from the participants on engaging with the corporates and this is an engagement with all the startups uh, i think i have already got 760 uh, interest so that's that's really fascinating that you know there are so many interest from you from you have hold on like to the audience for like more than 2 hours for you it was 1 hour uh, but i think it's more than 2 hours yeah, and you hold one, on so to let me just number share, uh, so i have shared my screen so that it is for the benefit of everyone so you know people can see uh, this is attending uh, which of the innovative solutions you would like to engage with so this is a share screen which i have been sharing and people are voting on where they want to engage we'll keep it open for another uh, few seconds and then we'll uh, kind of <clears throat> go to the poll results so yeah I, i'm glad we that you know there are people screen, yeah we can just see a home screen out here you're just able to see my home screen uh, you're not able to see the poll results or oh, so then i don't know how do i show that No, I mean the, the results will be displayed only when we end the poll. So we'll just wait for ten more seconds and end it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you end both the polls, Meer? Uh, first, uh, po end the poll of the survey, and then we'll just we'll be taking an uh, edit. Uh, I know that we need we need to close, but we'll just take another uh, couple of minutes, max two minutes to. Sure, sure. Are you gonna? Uh, what about? I keep hearing about this music you're excited to play. Are we gonna get any more more music on it? Uh, we can do the music, but I need to then again go to the share, share screen. So while we're waiting for the uh, the poll, I'll just say some of you may have joined us. We did an AI punch a few months ago in person before coronavirus, and we had this sort of debate format. And the idea was we're going to have more music. So now we're dealing digitally. But all right, here yeah. we go. We have the uh, poll results shared. This is a shared wow. result for the uh, for the interest for the uh, for the engagement with the corporate. I am glad that all the startups at least uh, have got uh, got the interest to engage with, and we'll be kind of uh, uh, doing that. Everyone is able to see that screen, right? The the poll. Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So, thanks, Meer, for that. And can we go to the next uh, share, Meer, uh, which is the four out of the three? Sorry, one out of the four. Meer, are you there? Yo, oh, here we go. We have we got ourselves a winner. Awesome. Awesome, but I think there's an interest uh, everywhere. Modulex with 20% vote, Geometry with 18, and Step to with 14. That was really, uh, really nice battle, I would say. Uh, and uh, congratulations to all the four founders. Uh, it's good to see uh, a good split like that. There's clearly a winner with Pillar Plus, but. You know, everybody got a good chunk of it. So, congratulations to everybody for presenting. Yeah, Utsav, uh, Snaptrud, uh, Naman, and uh, Suchet. I mean, can you switch on your video and give your final one thought on the overall discussion before we close for the audience now? Absolutely. No, I think it was a really, really healthy discussion. Love the format. It was just uh, you know really good to engage with everyone in this way. And 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 I mean, I mean, we really uh, love this. We would love to do more of this. Thanks so much for uh, you know the entire format and everything else. And yes, uh, uh, you know, from a geometry perspective, it was, it was really nice. If you want to go virtual, come see us later. Sure. Yeah, really apt actually. So it was very helpful. We were able to pitch to a very large audience and at the comfort of our home, given the situation. And I feel like we should probably, uh, if more events like this keep happening, I think so it will be pretty beneficial for not just us but also for the real estate community in general. Thank you, uh, Pilipas. Yeah, uh, thank you guys for this opportunity. Uh, this it was my first it was time that I did something game, like this. <laughs> it, it was the first time I did something like this, so uh, really excited and looking forward to working with a lot of people here. Sure, you will, of course. Uh, Suchit, uh, I think uh, we have Modulex. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Congratulations, Pillar Plus. Yes. Uh, very exciting. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. It's amazing to see all these uh, different tech startups, and we're really excited and looking forward to uh, disrupting the construction sector in India. Uh, thank you once again. 
Thank you. Naman, I... you got my Naman, you got my vote as well. So congratulations, and and you know, let's let's think of integrations. I think another thing that this platform gives us is the opportunity for all of our startups to collaborate. Would love to do that. So yes, that's yeah. that's an important thing. So Eric, I I think you want to do the final note, Eric, and uh, we have the end. We have to end the poll for the last uh, session. I'm very excited to share that with uh, everyone so that you know we can all be more prepared for the next session eric over to you for the final words and by the time we'll be able to share the last poll result sure so just once again wanted to thank all the panelists for joining and, and offering their feedback and questions and all the startups for presenting and of course everyone who tuned in from home uh for sharing your time we hope that we're able to add some interesting thought and perhaps some viable business solutions for you during uh these tepid times with the coronavirus. Just want to announce that, you know, assuming that the audience is interested in seeing this again, we're going to be bringing um, 10 new startups with new solutions uh, from time to time across the globe. Uh, it looks like we've got a, a, a pretty strong showing that people really like to showcase. We've got one holdout that wasn't a big fan, uh, but you know, you can't please them all. But it looks like there's overwhelming support for events like this and the opportunity to showcase solutions and. Uh, see what we like and really appreciate the audience support. That means a lot to us. Um, it means a lot to the startups. You know, everybody's going at this, working hard to try to try to add meaningful value. So excited to see that. I want to thank again our partners, Geometry, Credit AI, Equals to Design Lab, KPI Architects, and Flow Design. Um, and now finally, uh, I will let Amit have the closing word and talk about a really exciting charity. So Amit, uh, I will just say Danyavat and Namaste and hand it over to you. Thank you, Eric. And there is just one, uh, if you think that this all is meaningful, uh, and even the startup founders request you to also spread this uh, into your network. Uh, there is a COVID uh, uh, helpline which we have started with, you know, to add to the PM Care Fund. So we, all the things which we are doing is just going to go to the PM Care Fund. So if uh, any one of you is interested in donating, uh, we've got more than five lakhs now. I think I've not checked the last thing. Uh, in to this, so please spread that word. There will be a link which is there in the chat box. You can go to the link and donate whatever you want to donate for the PM Care Fund. So I think we we can as a community come together and help uh, help the ones who need it. So that's that's going to be my final word. And this were like really exciting last few days, and I'm I'm hopeful that every one of you who joined us as an audience kind of appreciated. We appreciate your business, and uh, it was meaningful for you as well. Over to thank you. I think that's that's thank it for you. today. Thank, thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Stay safe. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. We'll end the session now.